Am I on? Okay, there we go. And uh, it's a blessing. And uh, we had a really good time in Sunday school. Amen? You know? Amen. And uh, by the way, my wife took my money and my keys, so I'm in trouble. <laughs> if she leaves, I'm gone. <laughs> but anyway, so anyway, I did want to mention that we have our prayer cards here. Be sure and get one. And I appreciate it very much if you pray for us. As you know, we're in a battle for the Lord. Amen? You know? And the devil tries to stop us every, every way he can. Uh, just talk to the preacher. He'll let you know. Yeah, there's battles here. Amen? It's true. So anyway, we understand that. Uh, I've been doing this for a long time now, 54 years. I've been preaching. been saved for 55. And I just hope and pray that you'll enjoy the message that I have today and that uh, it'll be a blessing to you. Here you go, honey. Now, the thing about it is, is that uh, our, the title of our ministry is the Bible in Pictures Ministry. And we go wherever God leads us to go. We go to any size church. We've been actually churches of three, six, ten, uh, you know, seven, twelve people. No joke. And we do the same thing with them as we do with anybody else. With the same spirit and everything else. Just trying to see people get saved and trust the Lord and be stronger in their faith toward Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. And that's what we're after. Uh, we want people to believe the Bible. Not necessarily believe me, but believe the Bible. Amen? You see? Because the Bible is the final authority, not me, not the pastor, but the Word of God is the final authority. And that's what's so important to understand today. So uh, we uh, have been able to serve the Lord this year, and I'm so thankful that we're able to get back on our feet and <laughs> sort of speak and uh, be able to get, huh? On my, foot. on my foot, yeah, on my foot, yeah. <laughs> the other foot's sort of weak. But anyway, uh, we're, we're here, and we're thankful to be here. We were here before... Uh, how many of you were here before when we were here? Okay, amen. A good number of you. Okay. Well, we hope, Lord willing, that you'll enjoy this message. Now, tonight, please be, be coming tonight because I've got a really good message that you'll li like, you'll enjoy, and I hope that'll be a blessing to you. Now, as we look at this, we find out this. Uh, number one is that uh, we're going to be talking about the three crosses. If we can get, thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Not everything, just, yeah, okay. Thank you. A side light would be fine, brother, if you got it. All right, so here's the thing. The three crosses. Now, this is very important. We understand this. The cross of Jesus Christ, the cross of acceptance, and the cross of rejection. Now, we're seeing this on, on the, as you read your Bible, you'll see this over and over and over in the Gospels, uh, the four Gospels. And we find out Jesus Christ was without sin. The Bible says that. The Bible says, for he hath made Jesus Christ to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him, 2 Corinthians 5, 21. I remember years ago when I was in Bible college, there was this one guy that said Jesus Christ was a sinner. I said, uh-uh, no, 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 it won't work. It won't work because he'd have to die for his own sins. Amen, you see? And the thing about it is he was without sin. And by the way, let me tell you this. That's why they tried to get rid of the virgin birth because the virgin birth shows that Jesus Christ was born from God, not of man. Amen? Very, very important thing. So as we look at this, we find out Pilate said, Behold the man. And we look at this, and we find out this. He says, I find no fault. Now, Pilate said three times, I find no fault with Jesus Christ. Now, according to Roman law, they should never have crucified him. But they did. Now, there were two thieves on the crosses, as we look here. The Bible says that when they were come to the place, which is called Calvary, where the, there they crucified him, and the malefactors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Now, the three crosses which represent three types of people that we see in the world today. Number one, Jesus Christ dying for sin. Of course, he died for us, as we know. Now, we find out this, the repentant thief dying to sin, and then we find out the lost sinner dying in sin. And there's a difference there. And these people say, well, you've got to be baptized to go to heaven. That's not true. That's not true. Uh, that thief wasn't baptized. That thief couldn't do good works. He couldn't join a church. He was crucified. Amen? You see? But yet we realize that he was accepted by God, and the other guy wasn't. And so we find out this. Now, this guy was not accepted. Now, we find out. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do, and they parted his raiment and cast lots. So here they're making a mockery of Christ and all the rest of that. The Roman soldiers, you know, these guys here didn't care. Of course, no, that's different with the centurion. Now, he's a different kind of guy. Now, they gambled and they lost. 
basically is what happened. Also, we find out the people stood beholding, the, and the rulers also with him derided him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he be Christ, the chosen of God. And this guy's mocking Christ, and they're saying, Come on down from the cross, save yourself. Well, Jesus Christ couldn't do that because he came to save sinners. Now we find out, and the superscription was also written over him in letters the Greek and Latin and Hebrew. Okay, this is the king of the Jews, Luke 23, 33. The cross of redemption, that's Jesus Christ. God's holiness required it, as we know, and his law demanded it. You see, the Bible says, you know, the law convicts of sin. And so we find out his law demanded this. Now we find out, what does God's law say? Well, God's law says, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Honor thy father and thy mother. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. Now, friend, I don't care who you are. You've broken one of these somewhere. Now, the thing about it is, have you ever lied? Well, if you just said no, you lied. Okay? Now, have you ever coveted, lusted in your heart, stolen something, disobeyed your parents, committed adultery? Then God says that you've broken his laws. Now, we find out this. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and all thy strength, and all thy mind. I've led people to Christ using that verse. Because, you see, that tells us that nobody, but nobody, has ever kept that commandment. Nobody has ever fully kept that commandment. Nobody. Only Jesus Christ. And so you see the standard is Jesus Christ, not your friends, your neighbors, your co-workers, or whatever. Now God says this, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death, we find out, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ the Lord. Now the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good, the Bible says, Proverbs 15, 3. So God is writing these things down. The Lord is watching you, my friend. His eyes are everywhere, recording what we do, what we say, what we think, where we go, and who we hang out with. By the way, I found out a long time ago, a lot of times people go down the tubes because they hang out with the wrong people. And I really do. The Bible says evil communication scrub good manners. He doesn't miss a thing. Now, we find out the books will be opened at the judgment. All will be revealed. And we find out the God, Bible says this, for God shall uh, bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil, Ecclesiastes 12, 14. So we find this to be so. Now we find out this, so that every one of us shall give an account of himself to God, the Bible says in Romans 14, 12. So everyone will give an account. Now notice this, the Bible says, I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. And the dead, that sinners, were judged out of those things which are written in the books according to their works. Revelation 20, verse 12. And notice these people down here, they're saying naked before God. So they have no clothes of righteousness or anything else. God's love is manifested or shown to everyone. Okay, the Bible says, all like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed. He was afflicted. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before his shears is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. You see, Jesus Christ knew he was going to pay the sacrifice. He knew that he was going to go to the cross. He knew that he was going to become our substitute. He knew that we needed him. Now, Isaiah 53. Jesus Christ became our sacrifice, okay? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And by the way, that's a great eternal security verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him, that's present, should not perish, future, but have, what? Everlasting life. How long is everlasting? Well, it's everlasting. Amen? You see? So we find out this. John the Baptist said this. Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. John 1, 29. Our Lord's obedience. He prayed for his enemies and forgave them. He willingly became a sacrifice for all mankind. The Bible says this, For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just, that's Jesus Christ, for the unjust, that's us, okay, that he might bring us to God. So you see, Jesus Christ is perfect. We are not. Okay, that's 1 Peter 3.18. The cross of rejection. Now we find out this one. 
On the left was the unrepentant thief, okay? And one of the malefactors, which were hanged, railed on him, saying, if thou be Christ. Notice the if. You see, there's doubt. There's if thou be Christ. Save thyself and us. Luke 23. Many want heaven without repentance. The thief had a remedy for sin before him, but he refused it. You know, it's interesting to note that there's two people in the same condition. One believes and one doesn't. So you can't say it's in your environment. You can't say it's your parents. Amen? You see? They're both in the same condition. But one received and one didn't. And so we find that true all around the world today. And even in families. One child receives and one child doesn't. We find that true. That's happened. One person believes, one person doesn't. Amen? You see? And so we find that all around us, you see. So we never know who's going to accept the Lord and who isn't. However, it's our job to try to do our best to try to see people get saved. Amen? You see? So that's what we do. Now, if we find out this. The Bible says this. That he, had, he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Matthew 25, 33. Don't wind up on the left hand of God, or that's the wrong side. Now, that's the left hand of God. Now, we find out this. The Bible says, Whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Now, the lake of fire, boy, let me tell you something. That's, that's not a nice place. Notice this. It's an awful place of torment and torture and horror and, you know, loneliness. Because the Bible says they'll be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. And those people will be suffering and in pain. Now, please don't go to hell. The Bible doesn't want you to go to hell. God wants, doesn't want you, want you to go to hell. He wants you to go to heaven. Now, the cross of reception, we find out this. On the right hand is a repentant thief. Now, and he said to, unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. So the Lord himself told him he's going to be with him right then. In paradise. Not a hell, but paradise. Now, heaven is a wonderful place full of glory and grace. I want to see my Savior's face. Heaven is a wonderful place. Boy, oh boy, I'll be glad to go home. That's my home, my friend. Not where I live, but the home is up that way. Amen? Amen. Now we find out this. Remember the thief's arms and legs were nailed to the cross, therefore he could not take communion. Okay? We find out he could not be baptized. He could not join a church. He could not tithe. Okay? He could not do good works. <laughs> You know, a lot of people think they're pretty good, but they're not. The Bible says all of sin. Okay? No one deserves heaven. No one. We find out this. The Bible says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. The Bible also says this. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Acts 16, 31. The Golden Gate Bridge. Now, this is an interesting thing, a story about this. We find out one of the longest and most spectacular bridges in the world, spanning 9,000 feet over the Pacific Ocean. It connects Northern California to San Francisco. It was built at a cost of $140 million back in those days. That was a lot of money. It took four years to complete. Uh, 746-foot towers on either side hold two steel cables three and a half feet in diameter. Those cables are three and a half feet diameter steel cables. Now, as impressive as it is, it's not the most important bridge ever built. That bridge was built 2,000 years ago. The span is the longest ever swung by an engineer. It stretches from earth to the gates of heaven. It was built by an awesome cost at the, to the chief designer. As the last rough rivet was driven in place by a Roman sledgehammer, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, died shouting, it is finished. Now, before his body had been removed from the magnificent superstructure of redemption, the bridge had been crossed by a thief. Millions more have crossed it since. Praise God. Okay. The greatest thing about this bridge, it's toll free. 100%. Jesus Christ said, and if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 12, 32. Jesus is the only way to reconcile sinners to God, to wit that Christ, God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, 2 Corinthians 5, 19. Jesus Christ is the bridge, my friend, to a lost and dying world. 
You see, the Bible says this. Now when the centurion, and by the way, let me say something about the centurion. A centurion was a man's man. And I don't mean one of these faggy kind of guys. I mean, he was a man's man. And I mean, he, he controlled a hundred men. And these guys were not sissies. These guys were real, that would be like the elite in the centurion army. And we find out we have elites today in special services today. And they know, you know, how to fight. They know how to do what they need to do. And they're well trained. And the same thing is about the centurion. He was in charge of a hundred men. And this guy had seen, forget me now, he had seen thousands of people crucified on the cross. Okay? And this is a very, very important man. And this is a guy that other men would, would willingly follow. Now, not every man is like that. But this man, they would willingly follow and serve him and be obedient and trust him. And you know the thing about it, let me tell you something. It's hard to trust people. But they would trust this man. They would trust this man. He was a leader. And he was a real leader. He was a man's man. And he wasn't some sissy, you know. And, uh, I mean, come on, let's face it, you know. I see some sissies on TV and I say, yeah. I'm serious. That's my response. I wouldn't follow that guy across the street. I'm not kidding. There's guys like that I've seen, you know. And sis on TV and in life and all the rest of that. So have you. You know that. And so it bothers me immensely when I see people following this kind of thing. And I'm thinking, man, where has manhood gone to? You know? Right. You know, I believe in a man being a man, you know? I mean that. And I'm all for that. That's what the Bible teaches too, by the way. Read Romans chapter 1 if you want to right. see that. Now, so we find out this. Now, when the centurion and they that were with him watching Jesus saw the earthquake and those things that were done, they feared greatly, saying... Truly, this was the Son of God. Now, that was a centurion's response. Now, here's a man that was honest with himself and realized who Jesus was. Now, Bert the burglar, by the way, this is a true story, and this is a very, very true story. As a matter of fact, years ago, I was uh, in Pennsylvania, and I was at this one church, and I had to go to the laundromat, and I went to the laundromat, and I met this young lady there, and I uh, told her, I said, by the way, if you come to church tomorrow, it's a Saturday, if you come to church tomorrow, I'll give you a tract, a testimony about a guy named Burke. She said, Burke, yeah, because her name was Karen Burke. Yeah, her name was Karen Burke, no joke. And so anyway, she came to church, and praise the Lord, I got a chance to lead her to the Lord after the church service and everything, and she got saved, and I gave her the, the tract, and it was about Burke, Valentine Burke. A real story about a man by the name of Bert. And this guy was a gangster. He was, he was a thief. Okay? And so we're going to read about him now and learn about him. But I just want to share that testimony about Karen Burke. I'll see her one day in heaven. Amen? You see? What a blessing that it was to know that here's a person with the same name, you know, of all things. Burke. B-U-R-K-E. And so here we look. Burke the burglar. A true story. Now... Valentine Burke was an old-time burglar with his gun always ready. Burke had spent 20 years of his life in prison. Get that now, 20 years in prison. Now, when D.L. Moody, we all know who he is, was in St. Louis for a big gospel meeting, one of the local newspapers announced it would print every word of a sermon. Boy, wouldn't you like every word of your sermon printed, brother? Yeah. Notice this. At that time, Burke was in the city jail. Someone threw a newspaper into his cell, and the first thing that caught his eye was the headline, how the jailer at Philippi got caught. It was just what Burke needed, and he sat down with a chuckle and read the story of, at, of the jailer's dilemma. It was not the usual sur uh, newspaper story, but Moody's sermon of the night before. What rot is this, he said to himself. He threw the paper down with an oath. After a time, he picked it up and read the sermon. Around midnight, after hours of bitter remorse over his wasted life, with many broken prayers, Burke received the Lord Jesus Christ as his Savior. The next morning, Burke had a pleasant word for the guard, uh, with the guard when the guard spoke to him. Now, Burke also greeted the sheriff as a friend. He told him how he had been led to Christ by reading Moody's sermon. When his case came to trial, it failed through some legal entanglement, and Burke was released. 
Known only as a daring criminal, Burke had a hard time finding work in St. Louis, so he went to New York hoping for a fresh start. But he didn't have any luck there either, so he re returned to St. Louis, much discouraged but still faithful to God. One day the sheriff called for Burke, and with a heavy heart he went to see him. Some old case they got against me, he thought, but if I'm guilty I'll tell them so. I'm through with the lying. The sheriff greeted him kindly. Where have you been, Burke? In New York. What have you been doing there? Trying to find an honest job? Have you kept a good grip on that religion you told me about? Yes, answered Burke. I've had a hard time, Sheriff, but I haven't lost my faith. Burke, I had you shadowed every day I suspected your religion was a fraud. But I know you have lived an honest Christian life, and I want to offer you a deputy ship under me. You can begin at once. Years later, when Moody was passing through St. Louis, he stopped off to meet Burke. He found him upstairs in a courthouse guarding a bag of diamonds worth $60,000. By the way, in that day, that was a lot, of, a lot of money. That was like millions. Moody, he said, see what the grace of God can do for a burglar? Look at these diamonds. The sheriff picked me out of everyone to guard them. He cried like a child as he held up the stones. What a marvelous way that God changed a person. The Bible says this, Come now, saith the Lord, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Isaiah 118. The creator of the universe cares about you. And my friend, that's what brought me to Christ. God, why would you love me? Why would you care about me? Because I didn't think anybody did. My friend, let me say this. He came to this earth as a man. And we find out they mocked him. They beat him. They spit on him. They whipped him. Jesus Christ took your punishment upon himself. He died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and rose again the third day. The Bible says this, The Lord is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. 2 Peter 3, 9. Jesus Christ said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him. Revelation 3, 20. The three crosses, my friend, are for us today. That Jesus Christ died on that cross. Those that accept Jesus Christ and those that reject Jesus Christ are in the world today. Okay, my friend, if the Lord were to come back right now, how would it be with your soul? Would you be ready to meet God? If you died today, where would you go? Would you go to hell or would you go to heaven? Would you go to hell or would you go to heaven? Are you 100% sure that you'd go to heaven? I said 100%. How many times I've knocked on the door? Sir, if you died today, are you 100% sure that you go to heaven? Well, about 80%, sorry, wrong answer. I got baptized, wrong answer. I try to go to church, wrong answer. I, 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 you know, I'm a church member, wrong answer. I give money, wrong answer. My friend, the only answer is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shall be saved. That's the only answer. Would you re be re saved today, my friend? If you died right now, are you 100% sure that you go to heaven? With every head bowed, every eye closed, let's pray. Now, Father, I pray to God for everybody here that you'll please be with them. You say, preacher, I'm not really 100% sure I'd go to heaven if I died right now. I've got doubts about that. Would you please pray for me? Anybody, just put up your hand real quick, like, I'd like to pray for you. Anybody, anybody real quick, like, just put your hand up, I'd like to pray for you. you say, preacher, I'm not really sure I'd go to heaven. I don't, I'm not really sure I'd go up there. I have doubts. Would you please pray for me? Anybody? I'd like to pray for you. I'm not going to embarrass you now, but I would like to pray for you. Anybody here now? Say, preacher, would you please pray for me? Anybody? Now, Father, we pray for everyone that's here. And, Lord, if there is someone here that's doubting their salvation, I pray to God that they'll get that taken care of today. In the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. God bless you now. Turn the lights on, please. Amen. You heard the message today. Um, couldn't see in the dark. Um, if, uh, if anybody raised their hand there for salvation. Um, so I'm going to ask again, if, you, if you're doubting today or you know today that you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, that's the most important need of the hour for you. Would you raise your hand and say, that's me, Brother Justin? I'm not sure that I'm going to heaven, but I'm concerned about it. Anybody here today like that? You might say, why does, why does Brother Justin always ask this at the invitation time? Because I hope 
that sometime there's going to be somebody who doesn't know, but they've been under conviction by the word of God, and they're going to know. And wouldn't it be good that you would know that if you brought somebody to church, they're going to at least get asked the question, and they're going to at least have the opportunity for someone to tell them about Jesus. That's why I do it. Because <laughs> I want to know. And maybe, maybe there's people who believed about Jesus, but they've never believed on him in a church service, a church member that needs to be saved. I don't know. No one's raising their hand. I, I trust that you're thankful today if you're saved. Now, what are you going to do with your salvation? What are you going to do with the gospel that we've heard about? The three crosses, the one that Jesus died on, and then he went and be, he was put in the grave, and then he rose from the dead. What are you going to do with the gospel? What are you going to do with it? Most, most people are from Wetumpka area. We have some people here that are from Montgomery. But just in Wetumpka, probably 15,000 people, maybe more than that, in the greater Wetumpka, all of Wetumpka area, probably within three or four square miles of this church building, probably 10,000 people, maybe. What are you going to do with the gospel? With your family, with your neighbors, co-workers? What are you going to do with it? Some people will never hear what we heard today. They'll never hear it because there was no preacher. I'm not talking about me. I'm not talking about Brother Todd. I'm talking about you as a believer, your ministry of reconciliation that the Lord's given every believer. Would you respond to the Lord today? Maybe where you're at, but I'd encourage you to come to the altar. Talk to the Lord about it. Maybe you're like, well, I don't. What about Saturday? We're going to go to Daphne. Surely there's somebody there that needs to hear the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Maybe you say, well, I just, I, I don't know about taking a whole day. Well, I would do whatever the Lord told me to do. That's always safe. If you're. If you think, well, I do want to go, but I just don't know if I can, well, then you probably need to go. You probably need to go. Take the gospel somewhere else. Maybe we get to lead somebody to the Lord that, um, that will be a great pillar in that church and be there until the Lord Jesus comes back and a help to it. Father, help us today, whatever you spoke to our hearts about through the word, through your word. I trust that we are very thankful for your salvation, your eternal salvation, your everlasting life that you've given us. And that we know that we have eternal life. May we move forward in our eternal life. May we move forward in trusting you by faith. May you help us to be sensitive about the people around us who don't have the opportunity to hear what we get to hear, who don't have the desire because they're lost to, to read your word, to pray and seek your face, to have a, a walk with you because they don't know. Would you help us to be sensitive to that? Even brothers and sisters who, are, who aren't walking with you, Lord, would, would you use us to be an encouragement to them? Thank you for speaking to us this morning. Lord, we, we want to be we want to be obedient in the ministry of reconciliation that you've given us. Would you teach us in our hearts? Would you help us to find the strength we need to do so through the power of your Holy Spirit and just going and doing it? We ask it in Jesus' name.